Tonight, I say to the Russian oligarchs and the corrupt leaders who built billions of dollars off this violent regime, no more. They're all men that emerged out of places like Russia and other post-Soviet states, especially in the 1990s and the 2000s, it became insanely wealthy in the process. Oligarchs. 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 These are all these billionaires that gained their wealth through, again, underhanded, illicit, suspect means. Maybe it was links to organized crime, maybe it was links to dictators, and then beyond that used all this financial secrecy all around the world, and especially in places like the U.S., to hide and launder so much of their money. Yeah, because of these sanctions, and because they're afraid of losing stuff, a bunch of these oligarchs are already speaking out against Putin's war. So, 1991, the Soviet Union collapses. 15 brand new countries emerge. New governments, uh, new legislators, new regulations, all of it trying to build up as quickly as possible, what we saw happen is that all of the Soviet Union's natural resource wealth, all of its uh, uh, gas fields, all of its oil wells, all of its steel plants, all of its mining facilities, the government still technically owned that, but they needed money. And so what they ended up doing is selling all of these assets at bottom basement or bargain basement prices. I've never heard of a more perfect description of a Russian oligarch, a former KGB agent who made his money off nickel mining. These specific figures that had political connections and that also had connections to organized crime. They're able to use extra legal means. They're able to use muscle and violence and bloodshed to get a, an insider track into gaining access to these incredible resources. is a gentleman named Roman Abramovich. And Abramovich made so much of his money through links to President Putin. He was a Russian oligarch that invested a lot of that wealth that he made in the 1990s and 2000s into things like Chelsea Football Club. This one guy named Victor Vexelberg, who's well known for having one of the biggest private Fabergé egg collections that he brought back to President Putin. Um, we have another oligarch named Pyotr Avon, who has this incredible collection of high-end artwork. His art collection is so massive that he's now lending out pieces of artwork to museums in New York, museums in London. These are really key cultural touchstones of country after country that these guys have been able to build up for years and years. They look like companies on paper. They can move money, they can move assets, they can own assets as well. The problem is these companies exist only on paper. They exist only to act as basic black boxes for these oligarchs to move and hide their money because it strips any identifying information from these oligarchs or from where this money actually comes from. So if you're looking at these companies, you have no idea who's actually behind them. shell companies end up investing, they end up owning all of these different assets, things like real estate, luxury condos, mansions and penthouses, but also office buildings and steel mills, uh, port facilities, oil wells, all kinds of real estate investments in things like private equity and hedge funds. You see things like the art market transforming into a go-to vehicle for hiding and laundering billions and billions of dollars in oligarchic wealth. And then, of course, you have things like the yachts, these beautiful gargantuan super yachts that are hundreds of feet long. I mean, these are floating fortresses out there that these oligarchs absolutely love. And again, all of this comes back to the anonymity because no one can track back who actually owns these assets, who's behind these shell companies. We are sanctioning three very high net worth individuals. Any assets they hold in the UK will be frozen. The individuals concerned will be banned from traveling here. 
and we will prohibit all UK individuals and entities from having any dealings with them. We're talking about specific targeted sanctions against specific oligarchs and their specific companies to make sure they can no longer access things like the American financial market or British financial market, let alone travel to these countries in the first place itself. The other thing that it does though, is it freezes all of their assets that are in the country itself. So all of these mansions, all of these yachts, all of these football clubs like Chelsea are completely frozen in place. They can't be touched, they can't be used, they can't be visited. They do not have any impact for political decision.